Hello and welcome, Marshmallows and Junior Detectives. This is Life on Mars, the Veronica Mars Rewatch podcast, where we take you through each episode, well, yeah, episode by episode, um, and recap the show. My name is Brenton. And I'm Emily. We'll be your host for this, and we're here to talk about episode two, which is credit where credit's due. I don't know how that plays in. No, not really. <laughs> okay, I was like hearing that at the end. I'm not sure if I really understand why it's titled that. No, not at all. I couldn't tell you at all what why it was titled that. Wait, I have a theory. Okay. Um, you know how Keith, jumping way ahead, mm-hmm. how Keith is like, isn't that case solved? I thought they already had the confessed criminal and she like followed her gut. Maybe like the credit is to her that she was right. Oh, that could be it. I don't know. We'll get there. Yeah. Work through it. We can see if we can prove that as we go. I like that. Okay. Um, but now that we're in the episode, what did you think of the second episode? Um, I forgot about Troy. Mm-hmm. Rewatching. I'm like, oh, I forgot about our trust fund East Coast rich boy. <laughs> right. Who doesn't have an accent. So he's definitely not from the East Coast. Interesting. Okay. Right. Like, you didn't pick up on an accent. No, there's zero accent there. And you would think there'd be some sort of accent. Mm-hmm, totally. New York, Boston, I don't know. Though, I don't know. If I think about Gossip Girl, they didn't really have accents either. Oh, inconsistencies. But maybe it's because they were like the, you know, the the higher class. No, they still have, there's still an accent. Hmm. But yeah, so Troy, Troy was the highlight. Paris Hilton, I forgot yes. about her uh-huh. one episode, true plot driver character. What's her name, the character she plays? Caitlin. Caitlin. Um, so that's a good jumping off point. So I tried to do some digging on our um, notable guest stars for this episode, um, specifically Paris Hilton. <laughs> And it's pretty much, I was hoping to see just some reason, just some interview where they like talk about it, like nothing I could find. It's probably and like, it's, Paris, what were, what are you doing today? You want to be on a thing? That's exactly it. It's just a, a Nepotism? Piece of, uh, they call it stunt casting, where it's like someone you know, like playing a character in a show. So, so nepotism has a fun name in um, <laughs> entertainment. She was already big at the, people already knew who Paris Hilton was. So it's like, oh, we'll put her in it. Oh. Stunt casting is um, where you cast like a famous person in like a minor role. I thought you meant because you said they knew like personally, like Rob Thomas was friends with the Hiltons. Oh, I mean, not that I've seen. I got it. Or now. not that you've mentioned. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a Jason Doring interview from this year that's like she that said he had a great time working with her and that she was no dummy. <laughs> No, I always thought she, much like Jessica Simpson, is one of those women who realized she could play the character of dumb enough to get my check to the bank. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But I don't, like, Paris didn't need the money, so it's just for fun. Right. Yeah. Savvy. Um, she hangs out with Tana Mojo now. God. Or Tana hangs out with her, I should Wait, say. Really? Like, no, I don't, you know, like, they run into each other at the clubs, and they, like, talk. And Interesting. I mean, like, isn't that not who Tana's trying, you know, like her protege, but Tana's just like the trashy version. Right. Exactly. Like, uh, <sighs> love that girl. If it, w- if Tana was t- 20 years, 10, 10 or 20 years younger then she could have been on Simple Life. Older. 10. Yeah. 10 Tana. Years older. Yeah. Older. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Uh huh. Let me track my own thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, Time. And. Yeah, so there, I didn't find anything other than it was just like piece of stunt casting and that like the community now is just kind of like, yeah, that was weird, wasn't it? Um, I think... <laughs> She's not bad. Well, and I was trying to drive traffic to a new show. So it's mm. episode two yeah, of a right. new show mm-hmm. that is on a network that no one watches. <laughs> right. Was A Simple Life on that network maybe? No. No, it was on E, mm-hmm. huh? Yeah. Paris went straight to main channels. <laughs> exactly. What was I thinking? <laughs> Um, I do want to know if Paris got to pick her own clothing mm. because it was very on brand with how she dressed at the time. Mm-hmm. If that was her own Vespa or if they got it for the scene. Wait, or do you think Kim picked it? Isn't that part of the, the Kim background? Kim Kardashian was her like assistant friend closet organizer. Gotcha. There's like a whole episode, I think, of The Simple Life where Kim cleans Paris' closet and helps her organize it. So do you think she picked out like, here's the pink to go with your Vespa? And then here's some shoes that you're going to wear heels while you ride on your Vespa. 
Do you not have to do anything with your feet on a Vespa? Is it all hand controls? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. It's concerning. <laughs> That's perfect. So you just got to get the kickstand up. I don't think she is putting her own kickstand up. No. Kim, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. I'm going to ride. Um, But her dogs weren't on there, and she always carried little dogs with her Mm-mm. everywhere. Well, she's a character. She's yeah, but- Caitlin. True. I mean, it, it wouldn't have changed anything. You're still looking at it being like, oh, my God, that's Paris Hilton. Mm-hmm. Um, Socialite extraordinaire. Exactly. And a hotel entrepreneur. Um, but it's, it's... Ironic that she was then part of the plot where everything takes place in the Neptune Grand a mm-hmm. Hotel. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Surprised it's not she a Hilton have... Neptune yeah, Grand. Exactly. <laughs> well, we don't know. Neptune Grand could be owned by Hilton. You should probably go find that out, isn't it, where you lived? <laughs> well yeah we can we can go stay there next time oh perfect um and <laughs> it actually ties into um i the best thing i probably saw was a reddit thread um on the veronica mars subreddit that was <laughs> uh, Ver- uh paris hilton stars as caitlin on the season one episode but in season two keith references house on house of wax so does <laughs> caitlin and paris hilton exist in this universe I mean, obviously. Right. I think that the world we live in, you know, you've mm-hmm. got your Paris and you've got your Caitlyn and right. they just happen to look like. Exactly. Or maybe Paris Hilton's origin story and why she had the simple life is because she was originally named Caitlyn, got caught with a boy from a motorcycle gang at the Neptune Grand. <laughs> exactly. And then decided that her dad needed to fix it. So they rebranded her as Paris. Ripped from her story. Exactly. Maybe it's her true life story. Yeah. Not Paris and Nikki Hilton. Definitely not. Mm, of course not. No. Um, also, why did Nikki never get to do anything? Can you notice that? Like, you hear about Paris. You never hear about the sister. She probably doesn't want to. Maybe. You think? True. If I had that kind of money, would I? Maybe she does, like, philanthropist things on the side. Right. Or maybe it's, yeah. They used to I, model. They yeah. both used to model. That's probably best case scenario. Um, or it's just differences of, like, she was the, like, social sister that like was always like talking to people and circulating and nikki was like the quiet more reserved one like how you they always compare like siblings mm, maybe that explains why it was nicole richie though and not the sister on the simple life right but this isn't a simple life podcast so i'll drop it <laughs> <laughs> we can move on um and then the other new character um troy is played by aaron ashmore who the first time we watched it, I'm like, oh my God, I know him. Like, how do I know him? And it turns out I didn't know him. I know his identical twin brother, Sean Ashmore, who was Iceman from the X-Men. Aren't they not identical? Aren't they, they fraternal? They're uh, identical. Oh. So um, this is going to be great for podcasts, but there's Aaron. Yeah, no, I've looked at currently. them. Okay. Remember, yeah, they... I looked them up last when we first watched right. it. I was the yeah. one that found them. I mean, they look like really ridiculously simi- similar. Yeah, but Sean's got a little more cheek. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> but he's he was on Smallville, I guess. Um, I so he did the sitcom route, or not the sitcom route, the teen drama route. Mm-hmm. Is Smallville a teen drama? Yeah, okay. it was um, Superman. But what if Superman? The guy without the belly button. Was that that one? I have no idea what who you're talking about. Oh, this was on I think like ABC Family, and there was like a guy without a belly button. A guy without a. Who played Superman? I think so, because he was an alien because he didn't have a belly button. <laughs> this is a plot point? <laughs> this isn't just like the actor like lifted up his shirt and there was like no like No, belly this button. is like a plot point is that he doesn't have a belly button and people find out. I think. I didn't really watch the show. Oh my god. I really hope that was part of Smallville. Well, okay. yeah, because Superman's an alien. Oh, um, so it probably was that. Yeah, it could be. So We'll keep th- you guys updated. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was on like CWWB. Yeah. For like seven seasons, a while. Um, he was also on Warehouse 13. <gasps> yes. So know that. I... Ten seasons, holy crap. Yeah. Who was he on Warehouse 13? Steve Jinx. I'm going to have to yeah, I look that up. I don't, don't remember that. I don't know character Steve Jinx was. I'll have to rewatch that show. That was um, a good show. And uh, yeah, he still does stuff. Um Latest credit on Wikipedia is Designated Survivor. Designated Survivor? Yeah, it's um, where the president dies and the vice president has to take... Something like that. Anyways, 
Um, so <laughs> those are your two big names for. This I movie. was thinking of Kyle XY. Oh, he didn't have a belly button, okay. and that was a plot point. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my favorite DC property. Is that a DC? No. Oh. I was making the analogy then. Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. All right. I get it now. Well, now that we've properly debated Paris Hilton and Aaron Ashmore, um, let's jump into the episode. So it starts off with Veronica and Wallace, and Wallace has the flyer for the O'Niner party, which... Oh, wait, actually... It starts off first with an error that I pointed out to you that shows the site of the high school, like of this, the actual high school, and says Oceanside Pirates, which yes. I had to immediately jump on. But I think they didn't fix it because they did make the mascot the Pirates because they're lazy, which I respect. Right. Because that's yeah. a lot of work to change inside of a school. Yeah. That's but just smart. Also, um, because it's coastal, like as a young viewer at the time, I would have been like, oh, the Oceanside Pirates is the mascot. Like, because they're by the ocean. Because I grew up where there were cows and no beaches. (laughs) I see. I wouldn't have known that was a city. I would have been like, what a weird mascot. Oceanside pirates. Like, are they landlocked pirates? (laughs) Are they pirates that aren't leaving? (laughs) It's pirates and then um, the water drained. Pirates are a weird mascot to have anyway. but Pirates? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a really, like, big one, though. But you kind of go... Once you get out of the realm of, like, knights and animals, then you kind of got started to... I don't know. I want to be part of like a team like the sloths or something. Yeah, like just do that be good. We'll hang out. The banana slugs. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so they find the flyer to the O Niner party. Mm-hmm. Which nine oh nine oh nine. Exactly. <laughs> what a zip code. I that down too, it's so easy to remember. Is it really is it that can't be a real zip code. Oh, it has to be. Um You keep you keep doing this. I'm gonna look you. it up. And I thought the coded flyer was tremendous. Because that's, like, a ton of work to be able to, like, put on for, like, something that is literally just a giant fire on the beach that'd be super easy to spot. Um, especially in Oceanside, where the bonfire pits are just installed in the beach. It's really, it really really wouldn't be too hard for people to be able to find it. And this is also time of cell phones. So there was a lot of people there, and you'd probably be able to figure out what you're supposed to do. Um, but it's also a status thing, I guess, if you're part of the O-Niners. Like, here's our secret code that we put together. So there's actually no 90909 zip code. Okay. But um, it's supposed to be um, north of San Diego in Balboa County, which is also fictional. Right. Okay. Because that's where Neptune is, right? Yeah. So it's basically where... It's probably Carlsbad. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Honestly, though, um, because Oceanside's right next to Carlsbad. Uh Uh-huh. And it's the North County and it's like the rich area. Yeah. Is there a richer area than that in that area? Yeah, uh, La Costa, but that's part of Carlsbad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so maybe it's like that section. Yeah. Where I wouldn't. I wonder if La Costa has like a sheriff department, because then that would be like spot on. Well, but also, I mean, how how does Rob Thomas know all of this? Is he part of the problem? <laughs> is he an O'Niner? Rob Thomas, is he an O-Niner? That's going to be my thesis on this <laughs> move, on this show. In 40 pages, I will. Exactly. Um, so then we get a flash to the party. And that's where Duncan and Troy, although we don't know who Troy is yet, sitting in the car being like doing their bro thing of like, yeah, we want to go mingle. Yeah, we're cool. Yeah. It- bro. Well, and it was very much like we're making fun of the people we want to hang out with, but we also want to be a part of them. Exactly. Also, like, Duncan, your sister died a year ago. Why are you, like, like, you get so mad when Logan is, like, being ridiculous, but then you're ridiculous. His character makes no sense. No. Duncan doesn't make any sense. The only thing that's consistent is the clothing he wears. And his brooding look. Yes. (laughs) But he, so I wrote this down. Because there's multiple times that I was like kind of noticing. I'm like, how do I describe his look? And it looks like he's like a salesperson that's on his lunch break. Because he's wearing like a blue button up, like or like some sort of like button up shirt that like is like rolled up to the wrists with like an undershirt underneath and then like loafers and like um, his jeans on. So it looks like he just like got out of a sales meeting like constantly and is wearing like his like Rolex watch. What do we think tech bro fashion looked like in the early 2000s? Mm. Do you think that's what Duncan is? Yeah, probably. Yeah. 
I wouldn't be surprised. I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I just, there's like, there's something like, this doesn't look like a high schooler. What is it? Well, one, he's probably like 30, but two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody. Nobody does. Yeah, I don't know. He's got a weird look to him, and he's... Mm -hmm. Not just talking about his face. No, he's uh, got a beautiful um, face. Yeah, yeah. And then that's when we also meet Caitlin, who knew Troy. Because she knows everybody. Right. So that's what that was like trying to get at, right? She just knows him because, like, probably same way that Duncan knows him, like, off the regatta kind of thing. I never, they never really, like, explained that mm -hmm. other than just having, like, Logan be, like, slightly threatened by him. So the point of having her recognize him was so that then Logan would later look through her phone. Like, it was just a plot driver. Okay. Yeah. That's my theory. And yeah. it's like, oh, I think she was the type of character that, like, like, her character was set up as a girl who flirts with everyone and you know right. how dare she because she's somebody else's property mm -hmm. makes me mad yeah paris deserved better she does yeah and i like caitlin also <laughs> i don't understand worth. why so like <laughs> logan he, like they all just like fight over her but it's because she's property and not because she's a person it's just it's very frustrating yeah. we'll get to that for sure um and then that's when weevil comes and puts his stakes his property like down on the beach. Ah, I love Weevil. Um, My favorite thing is when he takes the beer and he goes, ah, it's the good stuff. Is this imported? Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's something he like, Weevil is the best at um, like delivering like the put downs in the show. Outside of um, Veronica. Wasn't he a child actor? Mm -hmm. It's very obvious like by the way he carries like himself on a set. Like you can just tell like he just like he knows what he's doing and he is what he is. Mm -hmm. He is that character. Oh yeah. He is really, really good. Oh. And then um so the he tries to get out he's like telling him like what are you doing on my beach? Which, going back to the last episode, PCHers. So they just stake the whole claim for the PCH. And I'm assuming the beach is just you know, because it's on the other side of the highway. Well, um, so like Pacific Coast Highway is literally just the road that. So the mm -hmm. beach is like you have to, yeah, it's mm -hmm. right there. Um, but <laughs> my favorite line from Weevil actually was when he's talking about what are they doing on um, his beach. He asked, "Do I ask you to play through Toy Pines?" <laughs> <He's> like, yes. <laughs> um, which then they get broken up by uh, the sheriff's department before they come to fisticuffs. Um, and the uh, sheriff department take the kegs so they can have a kegger at Sheriff Lamb's house. Which is probably, like, not unrealistic, especially no. at that time. No. And especially, like, those towns. Um, you're not doing much. Yeah. You're breaking up kids' parties. I don't know. I mean, the police department in my town really got off on telling me that I couldn't swing after 9.30 p.m. So <laughs> they had five cops there just for two. Right, to arrest two, you on the playground. Two 17, 18-year-old girls, you know. How so. dare you? <laughs> there are a couple parties happening, but, you know, let's go Let's go get these girls eating Taco yeah. Bell on the swing. Impound the swing set. Tell everybody <laughs> to have a barbecue at my place. <laughs> no, they just opened my orange juice and sniffed my Taco Bell. <laughs> Oh, God. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> it's extremely uncomfortable. Um, then the next day is when the sheriff's department shows up at Weevil's house and arrests his mother, uh, grandma. Well, wait. We skipped a part, though, and that was when oh. Sheriff Lamb and Veronica and Keith go to brunch, right? No. Oh, is that later? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> they go to brunch. Yeah, I made it sound brunch. like they... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mimosas. <laughs> Cheers, Lamby. Yes, yeah, Sunday fun day, Lamb. Um, yeah, so they uh, arrested um, his grandma for credit card fraud. Um, and we meet Chardo at this part, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Weevil's cousin. Yes. Who, um, like, lives with them, I'm assuming. And they all live with the grandma. Yeah. So Weevil, Chardo, and the two little kids that I don't know if they're their younger siblings or, like, other cousins. Right. All... Live with the grandma. Though mm -hmm. I will say, like, in a later season, isn't it Weevil that has his little... Is it his little sister that he takes to the carnival or cousin? It's cousin. That's good. Yeah, I don't know, actually. But that'd probably yeah. set who this is supposed to be. Totally. You're 100% right. Um, So that's... Like, on the as they're arresting his grandma, like, he's... Sheriff Lamb is pretty much telling Weevil, like, hey, just turn yourself in. 
Yeah. Like, I don't want to arrest so an words. old lady. Exactly. You're really going to let an old lady, like, go to jail. Um, and then we go to Mars Investigations and Cliff, um, who's representing Miss Navarro. See, um, he's not a scumbag lawyer. He represents the people, Brenton. I know. I know. I had the wrong vibe. You did. You were wrong. I was very wrong. Um, and enlist them to figure out, like, who actually, like, stole the credit cards, pretty much. Um, pretty much to twist, to find evidence that Weevil did it, to, like, twist his arm. So everybody believes that Weevil's the one that stole the, or not stole credit cards, sorry, used the Eccles name to get out fake credit cards, because Weevil's grandma is the, um... Eccles housekeeper. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Couldn't get it out. Um, but Veronica doesn't think it's Weevil because he helped her recently. Exactly. So she's on the case to try and figure out um, who actually did it and prove his innocence. Well, and because Logan's such an asshole that you like kind of want to assume it's him. Like I really like the way they play with red herrings in this show. And I do think that is one thing I will credit Rob Thomas for. Absolutely. Um, it's the whole time you're sitting there and you're like, oh, it's Logan. Like, I don't know why he's stealing money from his own family. Like, did he do it just to get back at that? Like, you think he did it just to get back at Weevil. Right, right. And Veronica. But as we go on, we learn that it's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she visits Weevil, Veronica, and they have a little tete-a-tete, like, um, of him being like, who are you to, like, come and, like, try and like tell me that I because she tries to also get it out of him like did you do this and he's kind of like how dare you like ask me that like also you're not of the people just because you got kicked out of the O-Niners yeah well and he he doesn't say kicked out he says you're still one of them right right so like he doesn't see her as kicked out from them she he th- I think he thinks she could still flex either way mm, it's right. only her that believes that she can't mm-hmm um, but did you notice in that scene that um, they put a little toy car on the edge of the fence? No. So like the, you know how she's on one side of the brick pillar? Mm-hmm. There's like a little toy like Camaro. Okay. Like right there. And the whole time I just kept laughing because I'm like, what? Like, I mean, like, because the there? kids are there, like, I get it to be like, oh, it's the grandma's house. Mm-hmm. But like, <laughs> why? why is there a little car? Like, does it mean something? Is it symbolizing something? Weevil loves... I don't even. Yeah, exactly. It's bigger than a Hot Wheel. It's like a like a a bigger than a Hot Wheel, like a model car. Oh, gotcha. But not like big. It's not like a Barbie van. Mm -hmm. But a big old car. Yeah, it was interesting. It Um, made me laugh. So it is. Yeah. After that, that's when we get the brunch scene. Mm. Um, I think they're at a place called Beach Break, but I can't um say that for sure. Um, my favorite part about that scene is Veronica's outfit. Oh. Veronica is dressed for the school day, and she is wearing a green newsboy hat that is green, like solid green on the front, and mesh camo on the back. And then she's wearing a green camo skirt, and then a pink shirt with a green, like light and dark green striped sweater vest over with little pink lines in it and it was just like like how you mentioned last time the whole like pink and green and like that really being the colors (laughs) of that time i was just like oh god like it is like it's like a watermelon but like edgy yeah exactly um so watermelon with a twist (laughs) i wrote the green vest reminded me of blues clues because it looked like steve's sweater blues could do we can do uh but yes that was the outfit of the episode do you think it's supposed to be a nod to blues clues no Really? Because he was a detective. They always solved the mystery. Remember he had his little notepad and they wrote down the clues? <laughs> you know what? Sure. Yeah. You never watched Blue's Clues. <laughs> I'm beginning to Blue's feel. <laughs> oh. but Did you know Blue was a girl? I didn't know that until I was older. Oh. Yeah. It always made me very happy that Blue was a girl and Blue was blue. Mm-hmm. Right. I thought that was important as a little girl. Right. Because I remember as a kid when they added the pink one. Magenta. That was her name, sure. wasn't it? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I can remember. Um, it was like, oh, they've added the girl. And it's like, no, they're friends. Mm-hmm. It's her friend. <laughs> um, but yeah, the outfit, it really got me. And then I think she's wearing like brown boots, not Ugg boots. If she's wearing Ugg boots, I think it would have been almost too far. Mm-hmm. Um, 
put like a dark brown boot that's like a little bit higher than an ankle boot like just in that right nice awkward mid calf spot oh right. nothing says make me look shorter like that mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um so keith bus um uh, sheriff lambs balls and then lamb bus keith on like oh you really think it was jake kane and we get some more like slight background on him going after jake kane and that all the canes had um alibis at the time of lily kane's murder but isn't keith meeting sheriff lamb to tell him that he thinks there's like a serial killer on the loose wait are you talking about no there's a a murderer yeah there's someone that had broke out of jail like a so keith is gonna track him down he's Uh. like oh aren't you missing this person so that's what he like busts him on hmm so that that's who Keith brings in at the end. Got it, got and it. And has one of the best lines of, I think you misplaced this. Um, then we go to the newspaper class and meet the teacher, Mallory Dent. I had to pull that up out of Wikipedia because she really doesn't make an impression on me, but she's still part of like the main credits. Well, but don't before this we find out that Wallace is now going to be working in the office at the school? Not yet. Oh. I don't think so. I you could be it, right, actually. I thought it was before this that it's like, oh, Wallace is now his his was it diving class? How they had four people, so they're now all working in the office. Oh yes, you're right. And yeah. so she asked him to make photocopies of Weevil's attendance record. Mm-hmm. And then that's when she like meets Troy. Kind of, they don't really exchange. Yeah, he, but he motherfucker gets, tells her to smile. Uh huh. And he looks her up and down. So I put Iceman equals Major Creep, but we all know it's not Iceman. Uh, I wrote in all caps, Troy tells her to smile. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, this like rascal. Yeah. No. no, not okay. Yeah, not good vibes. Not good vibes. Um, And yeah, the, the, so then we go to the, the newspaper class. Because she has Veronica to have the class joined. switched. Because it's mm-hmm. like, oh, we want to take her out of this class and put her in newspaper. Right. We don't know why. Shows off her camera skills, and it's like, oh, isn't that funny? Um, And then (laughs) her and Duncan get put on assignment together. But the teacher, like, (laughs) oh, do you know, like, Duncan? Like, Duncan, this is Veronica. You guys are going to write this story together. And I'm like, this town is not very big. Her dad was the sheriff. His sister got murdered. Veronica was best friends with the sister. Like, there is no way this teacher doesn't know that they already know each other and dated and broke up. So what the hell is she (laughs) doing? Because meddling with children is fucked up. Right. And this is high school. Yeah. It's a small world anyway. (laughs) It already feels like you're suffocating. Exactly. Um, So she's playing matchmaker or potster. I don't know. Or she's just dumb. Right. Maybe she just moved there? It almost, yeah, it almost seems like she didn't know Veronica. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. It's not like we get background on that. Um, and that's when they go... Oh, wait, no. So she gets put on assignment with them, but they don't go um, out to take pictures yet. I'm getting ahead no, of myself. No, they both off. They're like, I'll drive. I'll drive myself. And so like, they right. aren't carpooling or riding together. Mm-hmm. So armed with Weevil's attendance records, she sifts through it with Wallace. And it's like, how would he possibly be able to make all these charges? Because these are happening when he's at Auto Shop. Um, and a lot of them, yeah, they're like all happening middle of the day. Mm-hmm. So like Weevil wouldn't have been able to like get out that many times. I it was like she... seven times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. To be able to like go make these like credit card charges. Mm-hmm. Um. Then when we're in, oh, and she also um, tracks down, she notices that there could be some consistencies with potentially with Logan. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's when we go to the parking lot and her tires slashed by Logan. Yeah, or did he let the air out? I'll let the air out. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> Not slashed. Yeah. Which is... um. Like the most passive aggressive. Like oh, at least totally. be aggressive and slash it. Right. So we actually. It's the second time it happened that year. So if he just let the air out, would you still have to change the tire? Yeah, unless she keeps air in her car. <laughs> Don't we all? 
<laughs> I don't know what you keep in the back of your car, but I don't have condensed air. Um, right. um, so then that's when Troy steps up and he's like, huh, let me let me help you change your tire, miss. Yeah, exactly. Like, hey, I'm handsome and I know how to change a tire. Right. And then he finds out. But no one has jacked this car up. No, just uh-uh. like like from like someone who's like knows how to change a tire. <laughs> like I'm like, oh, we're just gonna change it on the like, ground. Like I'm sure she's got a car jack in the back where you would, you know you just pop up the one right. side. But like, it's oh, we're just we're just doing this. <laughs> like you're just gonna loosen everything and then leave it. Right. I have no. <laughs> I 100 percent bet that as soon as they left and the scene ended, Troy's like, does anybody know how to change a tire? <laughs> <laughs> Weevil uh, comes over. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. He acts like he knows what he's doing. It's just very obvious that the people on the show don't right, know what they're right. doing. Um, but then that's when we see fake Dick. Because the yes. real Dick Casablancas isn't in this scene yet. He does come later. Mm-hmm. But he's not in the scene yet. Right. But in this scene, we get our first fake blonde Dick, which is um, hilarious. Like, do they <laughs> yeah. phase him out? Because then I don't feel like we ever see this guy again. No. Uh, uh, he's, and he doesn't say anything. It's just like, oh, like, I don't think Dick's in here yet. Like. Here he is, but appears at the end of the episode. <laughs> um, and then a lot of the O Niners kind of disappear as the show goes on. Totally. Like at the, the the friend group gets smaller. The nucleus just keeps going in and in and mm-hmm. in until it's just basically Logan and um Duncan. Yeah, pretty much. Um and there's like some other people that'll pop up. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much only them though. Um, but this is also Paris comes in on her pink Vespa, pink heels, pink uh, outfit, pink skirt, pink shirt, pink headband, probably mm-hmm. a pink cell phone in there. Yep. Rides over to Logan with his puka shells and his blonde tips. Oh, did you notice her phone, her cell phone? It was like a, it was a silver flip phone, but it had a cell phone charm on it. Do you oh, remember those? I Yeah, I definitely remember. Cell she phone had a charms. cell phone charm and it was like a long dangly one. Nice. And it made me laugh because <laughs> when Logan's holding it, you're just like. Right, maybe now that the razor's coming back, cell phone charms will come back. Oh, good point. Good point. Though this was pre-razor. Right. I mean, you know, if we're bringing it all back. The only razor that was around then was the scooter. <laughs> Bashing your knees. <laughs> um, and, oh, right. Duncan gets jealous and comes over and he's like, hey, you want to ride? And we'll go, like, take pictures of surfers. And Which, this is his own friend. So right. I'm like... Why couldn't you just be nice like he was trying to help her and you obviously don't want to date her anymore, but you still love her because you're weird. Yes. Um, I'm possessive. Out of the way, Troy. Mm-hmm. She is mine. Yeah. But no one can have her. Exactly. She's Scarlet Letter. Uh-huh. Um, Turn it upside down. You got to be. We'll just write a little paper about Hester Prynne versus Veronica Mars and see where it <laughs> exactly. takes me. Hey, you've got well, you've got two homework assignments. Now. <laughs> Is my English major showing? <laughs> right. You got a thesis on Rob Thomas and O Niners, and now the Scarlet Letter. Uh huh. Well, it's more of work. investigative journalism, I think, for Rob Thomas and the O Niners. Oh, okay. Is he or isn't he? Right. Expose. Yeah. Do you uh, hate who you are? <laughs> Is that what the, Is that what the show is about? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and so that's when they ride off to the beach. Take pictures of surfers. The whole film or the whole scene is filmed in sepia, like the filter. Every oh, time right. they're at the beach, well, just her and Duncan. It's like that orangey sepia, mm-hmm. like the whole thing. And just when they're at the beach and not when her and Wallace were at the beach the time before. <laughs> no. And I don't think ever again. So like, I was like, is it supposed to be like romantic or like. Right. Like what like sort of sense are we in? Yeah. Also, like, I'm sorry if you were my best friend's brother and we had dated and she was murdered and you broke up with me i just would have been like no thank you i'm not going on this assignment yeah totally but she still kind of wants to be with him is the yeah vibe we're getting um one thing i did forget to mention in an earlier weevil had turned himself in um for his grandma's crimes and then everybody's like why are you still investigating this veronica so then when they're on their way to the beach, she goes, slow down, and just stares at Weevil. And he's, like, picking up stuff off the side of the road. It's like, Jesus Christ. Also, if he's in jail, why is he also doing community service? 
Because they're cleaning up trash on the side of the road and in their not jail like he outfits. Have been already like released to do community service. Yeah, exactly. Or like given any sentence, mm-hmm. he would be in. Um... I forgot the term for it. He's you're... just like pending litigation, but where, you, where you're like in liminal jail, but you're not like sentenced yet. Well, and he's a minor, so he should be like in juvie. Oh, right. So does juvie clean up on the side of the road in their orange jumpsuits? As someone who's only been threatened but never been, I cannot answer that question. <laughs> well, at least at my juvie, we were able to wear whatever we wanted. <laughs> that would that you refer to your childhood as. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we had tennis courts in my juvie. Oh, God. You really <laughs> are an O-Niner. <laughs> my college juvie. I'm going to go find Veronica and get out of here. Yeah. It was, you know, we shorted the stock market. Um, <laughs> and they get pulled over by the police because there were tickets on the car. Well, after they leave the beach. Right. They finish they... their beautiful romantic beach scene mm-hmm. together and then of they taking get taking pictures of shirtless men. Mhm. They get back in Donkey's car and then they're driving down the dunk, PCH. Dunk. <laughs> Call him Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're driving down the PCH and then they get pulled over by the sheriff. No. Of highway patrol? Sheriff. Yeah, highway patrol. Um because when oh. Jay Kane arrives, he's like, "Why don't you call the sheriff?" And they're like, we don't call the sheriff for, yeah. like, normal things. <laughs> for giving your son a ticket. Yeah. Um, um, to get him off. But that's, um, so it was all on the day of Lily's murder. Mm-hmm. The anniversary. Right? No, oh, the no, the tickets. original tickets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they just have a flashback of riding in a car. Yes, but it's, like, literally almost a year later because remember the um at the breakfast scene lamb's like what are you gonna do to celebrate oh you're right Mm -hmm. maybe it was the anniversary Mm -hmm. interesting they were from a year ago and then so veronica has to call keith to come get her Mm -hmm. and she's like dad i won't explain until you get here because being cagey is fun yes and um (laughs) duncan's dad shows up mr kane and he's all mad about the tickets, or he has him call it into the sheriff, and then you know, donkey's free to go because nepotism and wealth mm-hmm, gets right? you everywhere. Exactly. Um, the Canes built this town. They did. Everyone down to the secretary was a millionaire. Exactly. Um, Man, I hate those students. Mm-hmm. Never mind. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then Veronica's dad shows up to pick her up, um, and we get a nice little backstory on Jake Kane, mm-hmm. which I think was a really nice way to do that. Yeah. Because for a long time, you're just kind of like, well, why did he think it was Jake Kane? Right. And it lets Veronica question it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just like, was my dad on the right path, actually? And he was. Yeah. Um, Ish. Kind of. I mean, he knew that the alibis weren't accurate. Mm-hmm. Those are the tickets. Um, But then Veronica's like, hey, dad, I know you had to pick me up from this really awkward <laughs> scenario where I was with my ex. But no, we're not dating again. Um. But can we stop by the Neptune Grand and can you pretend to be an angry father while I pretend to have gotten pregnant from a random man? As he said, bad cop. Yeah, good cop, bad cop. Uh huh. See, I feel like that's just fun for them. That's like letting off steam. Yeah. Hey, we went through this traumatic incident. Let's head down to the hotel. Let's crack this case and we'll, we'll have a little fun. Well, but he says, my favorite quote, which was the, isn't that solved? I thought they already had the confessed criminal in jail. Which is the same thing that happened with the Lily Kane case because they already have a confessed criminal in jail. Uh, so uh. literally, like father, like daughter, they both are like, we sure, like the case is quote unquote solved, but it's not correct. And we mm-hmm. have to do things correctly here. Interesting. Yeah. Good one. Um, yeah, I really like that hotel routine though. Yeah, it is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the poor sweet girl working at the hotel. Right. <laughs> Um, but so she's able to get him the name on the room? Um, and the, um, who signed for the room service and stuff like that. So she asked for security video or whatever, and they couldn't do that, but she was able to pull the receipts for the charges on the room because Veronica had the original receipt and said that she had paid. Yes. Right. Um, right, 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 right. And then we see Paris Hilton's little signature. Well, Caitlin. What's Caitlin's last name? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, sorry. Um, and they, yeah, so she's able to figure out. And they got a, a list of phone 
numbers, right? Calls that were made from the room? Yes, I believe so. Yes. Yes, because whoever did it put our girl Paris up in a nice little hotel room, and then she was out calling her friends and doing her things while she was waiting for her mans to come. Oh, yeah. Whoever that might be. Dun, dun, um, dun. So then back at school, Troy comes up to Veronica at lunch to invite her to a party when she's sitting there with Wallace. And he's like, oh, I guess you can come too. I was just like, no. And also, like, I feel like Troy should know by now that she's probably not going to want to go to whatever party, like, is going on. Yeah. It, especially since he hangs out with the O-Niners. Yeah. Which is like, okay, great. Um, and so the, at that point is when she's calling the numbers. No, 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 no. No. Jumping ahead. She goes to... Weevil's grandmother. Mm-hmm. So I wrote down, Weevil's support system is awful. <laughs> yeah, the poor boy had nothing going for him in life. Exactly. And, I mean, obviously, like, it's great that he's, like, staying with his grandma, but she's just like, oh, yeah, he can serve time. Like, tr- <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, man, I'm sorry. We're jumping around. She doesn't go to um, Weevil's grandma yet. They, she runs the number on the phone. And they find out it's Chardo, while Logan goes through Caitlin's phone. Oh, so you were right, yeah. Yeah, and figures out it's Chardo, because he calls the number, and then Chardo does his, like, semi-dirty talk on the phone in the middle of school. Um, But my favorite part is that he's going through her phone because she's talking to Troy. And she's, Mm -hmm. like, over there talking to Troy. So if he had called that number, and it had been Troy... And Caitlin would have seen him going through her phone. Like, either way, he was <laughs> right. losing. Mm-hmm. There was no winning there. No, but if we're tracking Logan through the end of the episode, too, it's like he wouldn't care if she would figure it out. Because then it's like, I know what, like, you're doing something against me. And, like, I'm, I'm, can hold this over to you. So even if it does ring and she figures out, like, he doesn't care anymore if she, like, happened to spot him, like, investigating this. Because I think pretty much in that moment when he's figuring that out, he's just going to dump her anyway. You know what I mean? True. Um. Yeah. Well, and I guess that comes into play later when it's, like, right. the bike gang scene. Uh-huh. But let's go back to Weevil and Chardo's grandmother. Yes. So, um... Veronica goes to Weevil's grandma and is like, why don't you let him know that it was actually Chardo? And it's like, Weevil can serve time. He's a minor. But like, (laughs) Chardo is an adult, so he would have to go to actual jail. And it's like, Jesus Christ. (laughs) So it's like, Weevil, all about family. Family, not all about Weevil. (laughs) Well, and so then is this right after this where she confronts Chardo at the school? Um... Yes, it's after this where she, like, pushes him into the girl's bathroom because Logan's looking for him. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite thing about that scene was one that, like, in this one moment you thought Veronica was strong enough to shove a large man into a bathroom. <laughs> um, right. I appreciate that. And then, two, the only thing hanging on the walls in the bathroom was a I stand with Planned Parenthood sign. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which was nice. Like, I'm like, oh, right. good. The early 2000s support, like... We love a good feminist, but, like, the way they treated women, like, this does not line up. No, uh -uh. (laughs) uh-uh. So she pushes him in there and is, like, pretty much confess what you did. And he's like, yeah, me and Caitlin are going to run away. And we'll leave. And then I'll write in a confession and they'll have to release Weevil. And then Veronica's like, nah, Caitlin's just a thrill thrill seeker. Saker, (laughs) yeah. Thrill seeker. Um, Basically, she'll hook up with anyone just for the fun. Right. Um, Put down other women. No, I don't. Th- like, Veronica doesn't say it in a negative way. She's like, I, you know, like, I knew her. Like, that's what she likes to do. Is like, Yeah, like, she's just chasing fun all the time. Mm-hmm. That's why she writes a vest when heels. Oh, she's just looking for trouble. I don't I can't think of anything else more fun. Also, did you think about the fact that she's writing a Vespa and he's writing a motorcycle? Like, how cute. Also, Weevil's, when she's talking to Weevil's grandmother... And mentions, like, oh, it's, like, because of Caitlin or whatever. She's like, oh, 
that girl doesn't like take um ice cubes made from tap water it's like wait she's been over <laughs> like no like, because take it out because um she was logan's housekeeper oh <laughs> <laughs> That's why earlier, too, um, Caitlin also says something about how when they're in the once the grandma's been arrested and they're in the journalism class, um, she says something about how she didn't even like her because she was always mean to her at Logan's house. Right. Okay. Well, that makes a lot more sense. That's why Veronica knows (laughs) to use that line. (laughs) That fills me in. All right. Because I was just like, wait, what? She's just like coming over all the time. No. Yeah. And Caitlin doesn't sense. cross the tracks. Right, exactly. I'm like, that wouldn't line up. But Her Vespa can't go over there. <laughs> I mean, you know, the road's uneven. It's not paved, right? Um, so, yeah, it pretty much uh, Chardo shrugs off Veronica. Um, and after... He goes to run away with Caitlin. Right, no. So after she talks with... The grandma, the grandma does the right thing, and Weevil's released, and they're like at like Weevil's house, and Weevil's like, oh yeah, like he's gonna get his kind of thing, um, and then we flash to Chardo trying to go get Caitlin, and he's like outside the house. And Wait, all- but Weevil delivers my favorite oh. favorite line. This I heard this hallmark moment was brought to us by you, Veronica. Oh yes, uh-huh. which is just like. <laughs> Thanks, Weevil. Yeah. <laughs> like, always relevant. Right. Like, best Weevil. lines. Best mm-hmm. lines in the whole show. 100%. But sorry, so then Chardo goes to run away with Caitlin. Yes. Um, and all the O-Niners show up because it's a trap. And Caitlin's just in the window on her phone, just semi-scaling. Stay. Yeah. Um, Which, I also feel bad for her because, like, she just wanted to have fun. Mm-hmm. And also, like... Logan's not going to show up to fight for her. He's fighting because someone else had his girl. Exactly. And she is property. Mm -hmm. And I hate that. Yeah. And it makes me angry. That's why she ends up where she's at at the end of the episode with nobody liking her. And then she must leave. Uh Uh-huh. She just rides her Vespa away into the sunset. Adios. That would have been a really fun end scene. (laughs) That would be great. (laughs) Or she's at the... It's the origin story of her picking up her dogs. Yeah. Oh, she goes to the shelter. Exactly. I'm sure she no. went to a breeder. <laughs> she had the SPCA. Um, I did write down that Logan at this point in the show is just a real, real villain. Like, when he shows up with all the o Niners, it's, like, extremely ominous music. And these, so you know that these guys are the bad guys. It made me think of that scene from Guys and Dolls when they're playing craps in the alleyway. And they go, craps, craps. And it's just like that. <laughs> You've never seen I've Guys never and seen Dolls. Guys and Dolls. <laughs> well... Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like it's a very like, look, we're like dark, but it's like still like very like, because it's in that case, it's a musical. And in this case, it's like a A bunch of preppy boys. It's a bunch of rich white boys. So Uh you're just like, oh, like this isn't it's supposed to be intimidating, but it's not. (laughs) Right. And then that's when Dick steps out of the car. Yeah. And that's our first. He yells Logan, which defines their entire relationship (laughs) throughout the entire series. His first line is like Logan. And it's truly like the only person he loves or cares about. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's true. And I also noticed, because in later seasons, he doesn't have the blonde highlights. Do the blonde highlights mean that he's more villainous? For Logan? Mm -hmm. I think it just means that trends changed and or Jason Doring didn't want to scalp burned anymore. Or are they a sign of evil? But wouldn't you think the opposite because Veronica's blonde and she's not evil? But it's blonde highlights. Mm, You're right. (laughs) Way to sell it. <laughs> um, and so right when they're about to beat up Chardo, the PCHers roll in. All with their helmets on. Uh-huh. Very proud of this bike gang. Exactly. No, they are they, safe. They're... And they're always dressed appropriately to be riding a motorcycle, too. Mm-hmm. It's not like they're wearing, like, shorts or, like, mm. like there's no heels on these Vespas. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the PCH ladies club. <laughs> Heels on Vespas? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, they've got, all got their big like biker jackets on, pants. No. Mm-hmm. Which, in San Diego, like, it's pretty hot. Oh, yeah. They're probably sweating. Well, did they actually film in there? Yeah. Oh. I mean, we don't know where that neighborhood is. <laughs> oh, it's probably around. It's in Southern California, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, like, tells Logan, he's like, hey, let's talk. 
So they cut some sort of backdoor deal where, like, they let Charo go. Um, and they ride off with them. And Charo's like, oh, yeah, thank you for, like, getting me out of there. Y'all my boys. Mm -hmm. And then Weevil's like, you're out. And I don't want to see you again. Boys get him. But don't go too far. Stop him before they, like, kill him, pretty much. <laughs> and they just beat him up in broad daylight at the beach. There's a man in the background who has, like, a pit bull. And he's probably just like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, it's not, like, an empty beach. No, no. Um, but yeah. <laughs> and I had to write about it. But I'm sure the guy who's just playing fetch with this dog is just like, uh, <laughs> we need to go. <laughs> gotta go, gotta go. Um, and... Then we kind of get our final scene where Troy shows up to Veronica. And I wrote, since I've been tracking <laughs> Duncan's clothing options, he's dressed like Duncan in this scene where Veronica like acquiesces kind of thing, but like hanging out with him. Because he realized that her and Dunky used to have a thing. And he's like, oh, mm -hmm. I can be that boy because, you know, mm -hmm. Troy gets what he wants. That's his whole character's MO. Exactly. Um, But then... We um Wallace comes up and is like, "Hey guys, like, they just added golden tea somewhere on in the second pack. The second pack. Oh, is that where he works? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, so, so we do get job. a re a re mention of the second pack. Mm -hmm. Um, we got the finest golden tea machine in all of Southern California. Um, and then Elbow uh, County, at least. Um, <laughs> Veronica goes. I've never played, but I'm sure I can kick both of your asses. Mm -hmm. And um nothing has resonated with you more <laughs> nothing to this day has resonated with me more than you know looking at two men and saying you can't do this i can't do this but i'll do it better mm -hmm. i bet you could play golden tea better than i i don't know i don't have any practice but <laughs> guess what you spin a ball back and you spin a ball forward i do have motivation mm -hmm. um but i i loved it because it was just such i mean it's a diverse group because it's a woman a black man and a white man, but it was such a white boy problem. Yeah. To end on. It's like, let's go play golden tea. Like you're <laughs> right, not even exactly. playing real fucking golf. Uh uh. Let's go play pretend golf. Yeah. It was for free, probably. Do you... he, I'm sure you can open up the machine, put in the coins. You think they give Wallace that power? It didn't seem like anybody else was working at the time that Wallace was when he was robbed in episode one. Um But don't you usually have to have like a tool to open the back? Yeah. It's the it's really easy to open it up. Is there something you need to tell me about your past history with gaming machines? Have you been stealing coins? No. Uh, so a friend of mine used to have a pinball machine mm. and also a Donkey Kong Jr. machine. Ryan had a Mrs. Pac-Man. I think he, pro he probably still does. It might be at my aunt and uncle's. And then he would, would he give you coins to put in it? Yeah. Yeah. And then it's just like a little tool. It's kind of like um, those keys, with, but it's just like one little slit on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get it. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, I couldn't imagine them giving that to Wallace. You don't think so? No, I think the owner of Second Pack, who leaves children to work <laughs> alone at night, would just come and grab his money when he wants it. I guess so. Because, you know, he left a child to work alone at night in an area that has a biker gang. Okay. And they're coming to steal the 40s. And we get our last shot of Caitlin, who's being rejected by um, the O-Niners. And Wallace says something like, hate to be her. And Veronica's like, yeah, me too. Yeah. You know, even though that's what happened to her. Exactly. So. They can't commiserate. Mm-mm. They cannot. Mm -mm. Because Paris has other things to do. She does. Take care of her pups. Right around on her pink Vespa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the end of episode two. Did we find out what episode three is called? Yes. You want to guess? Um, I mean, I'd, I'd be very surprised if you could guess it, but I like this game. Um, give me a hint. <laughs> first letter is meat. The first letter is meat. <laughs> <The first word. laughs> it's meat and then a name. First name last. Meat Dick Casablancas. Nope. Um, me. It's not meat beaver. No. That's later. There's a whole episode called Beaver. I believe it's Beaver. Yeah. Um, I bet this is a reference wait, to something. But is it um, Meet Dick and Jane? Um, is it? Is this the one where we're gonna get Mac? Um, 
So it's not Mac. You no, know, I'm not sure. No, it's not. <laughs> it's first name. Okay, it's Meet John Smith. <laughs> um, so this is one where she has to track down someone's father. Oh. Oh. Yeah, this is a pretty good one, um, if I remember correctly. But yeah. So I'm excited for the next episode. Any final thoughts? Um, long live Caitlin. Long live Caitlin. Mine's um, really truly that the, the safety and precaution this biker gang puts into taking care of themselves. I think it's responsible and I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's an important shout out. But they don't really have like club jacket. You know, like they're not like a motorcycle club. Like they're a biker gang. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no Hell's Angels patches or anything. Exactly. They're just, well, PCHs. I mean, also it's ran by a 17 year old. So like, right. who's going to go call the people to get the patches made? And... Exactly. Well, I bet he would probably know. I mean, it seems like the only he people he knows are people that can help fix cars. That's true. So, also, yeah. did Veronica get her headlight fixed from the first one? <laughs> I'm assuming. Do you she think must she, have. Yeah, she must have gone over there and yeah, had Weevil's I, uncle fix it. I bet Weevil would have hooked that up for her. Well, he said he did. Remember, he was like, "Oh, if you oh, want, yeah, if right. you want, you can stop by my uncle's." But then, like, we never see that. No, and we never hear about it. Mm-mm. It's never like, "Oh, thank your uncle for me." Yeah, Logan's really busting up her car. Yeah, dick. What a dick. I know. Um, I guess anything else before we sign off? No, I think I've said my piece. I appreciate the Paris Hilton cameo. We should keep a running list of all the people that cameo. Yes, there's a lot of them. Mm-hmm. A whole hell of a lot. Well, I'm excited to see what Dick does in the next episode. Oh, yeah. Get some more Dick. All, All right. right. Until then, wait, you had a good sign-off last time. I don't remember. Oh, dang it. Stay golden brown, something like that. I said that. <laughs> yeah, stay golden brown marshmallows. Uh. Oh, oh, um, what was it? Don't well no because we were talking about burnt marshmallows. Right, so it was like oh, don't like, get burnt. Like toasted marshmallows. Stay toasted marshmallows. <laughs> 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 <laughs>